It's called gamification and fun. In a rather cynical change, I've put fun in distancing speech marks because I think that fun is highly subjective at the best of times, can be a euphemism for all kinds of things. So, let's get into this. At the start of any talk, I like to gauge the mood of the audience. So, choose one emoji and let me know how you are feeling today. Shout to me. Happy. Smiley. Smiley? Happy? Yes? Anyone else? Hope Peaceful. So. Peaceful? Hope so. Yeah? The whistling one. Great, so it's quite an optimistic group today. That's good. Let's see if we can do anything about that. Okay, now the first question, of course, with this is what is gamification? And quick definition of this it's the application of gameplay, game design elements, and the principles of games in non game contexts. Now, for us, we're thinking about pedagogical contexts, but gamification, as we might know, is also a after use as an element in marketing, for example, as well as a way to engage people with a product or service. Now, in training and teaching, we'll be using gamification in two ways. Firstly, there's actually learning from the game itself. That's when team members, they take part in the game, and then they follow this by reflection, peer feedback, teacher and trainer feedback and thinking about what we've learned, what we can do. Another way we as teachers, as trainers can use gamification is to disguise learning in the game itself. So the first type we're learning from the game activity, second type the game simply serves as a way that we are disguising what people are learning. Now, in any game task, all the time while the game is going on, the teacher or the trainer, we should be monitoring, unintrusively, ideally, monitoring what's going on, the tasks, and taking some notes without interfering. So we're focusing on things like language, we'll be going around monitoring while our students are completing the task, writing down any areas where we need to give feedback, anything that is room for improvement, any repeated errors, but also things as well that the students are doing well, that they need to continue doing. And importantly, as we've said, after the task, after any game task, there needs to be time dedicated to reflection. Thinking about the task itself, thinking about how well we've communicated, thinking about the target language that's being used. We then do some peer feedback, some teacher <laughs> trainer feedback, we talk about things like the learning experiences, how effective our communication has been. We then do some teach input. That's where you do the actual teaching side of it, looking at the errors, for example, the corrections that need to be made. And if relevant, we can think about the real world application of the game principles. So how is the game actually relevant to what we are doing in reality? And I'll be giving you some examples of these in a moment. Now, the great thing is with gamification, it can work with pretty much anything that we are doing, from short practice tasks, getting to know you tasks, longer production tasks, review tasks, anything. And there's eight times, I think, that we can think about how and when to gamify. And the first one, we might want to gamify by task type. And that's when gamification occurs normally or unconsciously with tasks such as a team quiz. There's certain tasks that we are doing as teachers, as trainers, that would be considered gamified, but we've not thought about it consciously. We just consider it to be a normal activity. The other time is we might think about task location. We can gamify a task through changing the setting, through moving away from the classroom to somewhere different. We can also think about the task nature. And that's I'm defining as gamification through a seeming ordinary task, but we make it competitive. So we do something such as set a time limit, or we have some type of first to finish approach. And that's a way of gamifying something that could actually be quite ordinary, making something competitive. We can gamify by design. And this is something where we think of a task and it's purely a game by its very design. So we're thinking about something such as some of the tasks I'll be coming to shortly, using balloons, for example. 
using uh, packs of, decks of cards. <clears throat> I'm also saying about task humour. We can gamify tasks through the culture that we as teachers, as trainers, co-create with our students in the classroom. If a task is naturally humorous and enjoyable, then to me at least that counts as gamification. I'm also saying about task adjustments. Gamification when it's modified into something that would be considered a game. So let's say you're doing a discussion task. It's normally, it's on a piece of paper, um, our students, our course participants are discussing how important something is. They've got to put things in order from 1 to 10. Now, we can gamify this. Instead of having it purely on a piece of paper, let's put it on bits of cards, let's cut it up. Let's have them moving things around, making tasks a bit more kinesthetic. I've also said task physicality. We can gamify tasks through making tasks more physical, having things like races. And the final one I'm saying about is gamification through use of a device. So something such as certain apps, um, I'm also saying about uh, certain devices, uh, let's say camera features, cameras on our phones, we can gamify tasks either explicitly and directly through an app or through making use of, de of devices, bring your own device. Now, there are two guiding principles if you want to gamify a task in the classroom. And the first one is that the task should be fun. It should involve enjoyment and there should be elements of entertainment. But that is not enough. If it's only going to be fun, if it's only enjoyable or entertaining, yes, it's motivating, but there's no pedagogical value to it. It's just there to fill in the time. So we must also meet our second criteria, which I'm calling utility. There must be some learning from the game or from something that is hidden in the game. And if you can, in your task design, if you can say, yes, it's fun, yes, the, our criteria for utility is satisfied, then gamification is relevant and importantly, it's useful as well. So I'll look at some tasks that I use some things that are, let's say, require a bit more setting up, a bit more equipment that you might want to use. And some of the common ones that I use are things like the tennis ball and the straws. Good collaborative task. Participants in small teams have to create a structure using only straws to raise a tennis ball and to hold it off the desk by, let's say, about 10 centimetres. Certain rules, they can't just bunch all the straws together and tie them around. They can't bump all the straws and put the ball on top of it. There must be some type of stable structure that they are making. Another classic one is using spaghetti and marshmallows to build a tower. Now, with these, you can set what the objective is yourself. Are we talking about shapes with something like this? Are we with a business English group? Are we practicing decision making? Are we just using this as a way that we can get people speaking? So the objective with this, using spaghetti, using marshmallows, build the tallest, most stable tower that you can. And there you're thinking as well about the task, yes, but we're also thinking about the language that's being used as, for the, the game is using as a carrier. We might do something with balloons. Balloon towers and tape, that's a good one. We're thinking there, we've got a lot of potential for carriers there. Again, we can be talking about shapes, colours. We're practising communication all the time. And again, we can have this as a race. We can set times for these, or we can just let these things run. Bridge building. If you've got plenty of old flip chart paper, plenty of tape left, bits of string, have your course participants, have your students building a bridge between two chairs. We might have some longer gamified tasks. And quite famous one in intercultural training is one called Vanga. And this one we can only really use with higher level groups. It's an intercultural training task that involves four, or you can do this with more, groups. Each group has a deck of cards and rules for the game that they must play. You take away, after everyone in the group has read the rules, you, the teacher, take the rules away. While the games are being played, there can be no verbal communication, only non-verbal. They play a game, and then the winner from each group moves on. 
silently. Now, the idea with this is that this replicates moving into a new culture because the winner does not know the rules in the new group that they've moved into. And as part of the rules of this game, you cannot explain what the rules are for your table. So after a few times that people have been moving around, you can do this for 30 minutes up to 90 minutes, depending on the size of your group, having people moving, and then spending time doing reflection on this. You can, using your devices, using cameras on our phones, we can use the cameras as a way to gamify tasks to check vocabulary and link vocabulary to visuals. I'm giving you an example here from a technical English course. Instead of doing things, flashcards, example, what do we call this, what's this, we can have people moving around. We've got the list of different things, pins, buttons, joints, handles, and so on, in our list of technical components here. And then everyone is running around the building, first team back wins a prize. They've then got to show you their photos, their pictures of what they have found for these items. You can also gamify writing tasks, for example. Instead of having participants simply writing an email, handing it into you, and then you marking it, make this a bit more competitive. <coughs> Set a time limit, give people plenty of email frames that you've done on paper, space for their email, space for the reply, and space for their reply as well if needed. Hand them out three to five bits of paper each, and have people in the group then scrunch up the emails, throwing them across the room to each other. And then people pick them up, they open them, they reply, throw them back to the sender. At the end, you can gather them up, you can have a look, or you can get some feedback about this. You can make this more competitive if you've got a few tables in your group. You can have people, the winner is the table with the least emails on their table at the end of 10 to 15 minutes. Now, when you are doing any gamified tasks, particularly the more physical ones, the balloons, the tennis balls, and so on, then we can engage people, get them involved a bit, people like to take some pictures during these tasks, encourage them to use a bit of social media, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. You might also want to set a hashtag for these and encourage participants to, if appropriate, share some pictures while, this task, while these tasks are going on. In terms of the pros and cons of gamification, there's a few things we might as teachers want to think about. Pros, of course, it's engaging, it's motivating, it's energising, so it's something good to use at strategic points throughout the day. You can have multiple focuses for the games possible. It might be purely language, you might have more interpersonal skills, you might have intercultural communication. It surfaces other hidden competencies that people have. So things like soft skills like leadership, so you can see who in a group is a good leader during these tasks. It appeals to learner differences if we're thinking about the representational systems, the visual, auditory, kinesthetic, if we're thinking about multiple intelligences, left and right brain, etc. It's great, as we said, at strategic points in a day, can be used at different levels, and it's also, if people are sharing these fun activities that they are doing, it's a good bit of marketing as well, either for the school, the institution, or for you as the trainer. People see this, and then they're thinking, oh, I want to be in this person's class. However, there's some cons. Preparation, and there's some equipment needed for some of these tasks. Now, I'm talking about the tasks that I'm using are things you can get from any supermarket. More complex gamification, there can be specialised equipment used for it that can often run into hundreds or thousands of euros of certain types of equipment. The purpose might not be obvious in some cases, so some students, some um, uh, managers might be a bit cynical about this. We said it requires budget and resources, we need to consider cultural appropriacy in some cases. It must not be overdone as well. If, you're just, if you are gamifying everything, then people will approach this, people can respond quite negatively to this. There's also the other question, is it purely a fad as well? Thinking about this in corporate training, well, in some cases, yes, it can be.